The fear of fascism was very, very strong at the beginning of World War II in the United States. Americans don't remember it, and we don't talk about it today, which I think is a shame. But in 1939, 22,000 American citizens gathered in Madison Square Garden in the heart of Jewish New York in order to support fascism. They had a banner hanging from uh, the side of the auditorium that said, Stop Jewish Domination of Christian America. Now, there's a picture of this in my book. In 1939, again, after Hitler invaded Poland, a thousand Americans marched down East 86th Street in New York carrying American flags and Nazi swastikas. And nobody booed. They were not booed. They were not cheered, but they were watched with respect. That's after Poland. There was a fear in America that, as they said at the time, it can happen here too. What happened in Germany could happen here. Germany was, for Americans at the time, the most cultured nation in Europe. If they could fall for Hitler, well then perhaps we could too. Yes, mass media was the thing that, that did it, according to many American intellectuals at the time, and it worked two ways. One way, people thought, was that Hitler and his circle were actually clinically insane, and mass media had somehow managed to transmit their madness into the minds of their listeners and their, their viewers. That was one theory. The other theory was that the mass media position, just coming from one source to many people at the same time, automatically put you psychologically in a passive, pre-fascist condition. Those two theories worked together sometimes, separately sometimes, but they were the dominant explanation at the time of why Germany had fallen for the fascists.